Increasing advances in robotics are transforming many industries, from manufacturing to transportation and warehouse management. Similarly, developments in robotics are changing the way in which wars are fought. Individually, robotic systems provide significant advantages, such as extended range, greater resilience, and more dangerous concepts of operations than possible or acceptable with personnel or manned systems. Collectively, robotic systems may present even more disruptive changes to the conduct of military operations. Swarming as a concept is not new. Swarms can be found first and foremost in nature. Think of flocks of birds or schools of fish foraging or defending against predators. In these swarms, individuals do not need sophisticated knowledge to produce complex collective behaviors. And typically, there is no group leader that guides all the other individuals in accomplishing their goal or task. However, Swarming is not limited to natural phenomena. It is also a long-standing military tactic that occurs when several units converge to attack a target from multiple axes in a deliberately structured and coordinated way. This type of swarming has occurred throughout military history, ranging from the behavior of horse archers in the 4th century to swarm-like capabilities that simultaneously target multiple vulnerabilities, devices, and access points in the cyberspace. Swarming is more than just a tactic. Swarming is ultimately a new way of thinking about command and control over military forces. Today, one person controls one robot, but this is a very limiting paradigm for thinking about how to use robots on the battlefield. Swarming allows militaries to move to a new paradigm where one person can control many robots at the same time. Robotic systems are enabled by the integration of three key capabilities. First, sense. Robots need sensors to gather data about the environment. Second, decide. Robots need also to make sense of that data and turn it into purposeful plans and actions. And last, act. The decisions of the robots are extended in the real world through their end effectors and actuators. If we combine the concept of swarms with robotic systems, we have robotic swarms. There are five key characteristics of a robotic swarm. The first one is mass. There is no magic number, and in theory, swarms may vary from you know, as few as a couple of units to thousands of units. While it could be said that quantity has a quality of its own, the optimal size of a swarm will ultimately depend on the swarm's capabilities and the mission it is assigned. The second is diversity. While swarms are regularly portrayed as a large number of exact copies of robotic units, a robotic swarm can be heterogeneous. This means that a robotic swarm can mix simple and more complex robots, or manned and unmanned systems, or it can also be a cross-domain swarm with robots operating in the air, land, and sea. The third characteristic, and possibly the most important one, is collective and collaborative behavior. Now, experts agree that for swarms to be different from simply large numbers of individual robots, they need to exhibit collective behavior that involves collaborating among individual units and with the environment. Considering this, many swarm demonstrations, such as Intel's drone light show during the 2018 Winter Olympic Games, may not be considered true swarming if individual robots were simply following their pre-programmed flight paths. To achieve collaborative behavior, some form of communication to allow for information exchange among the robots is necessary. Communication may take different forms and be both explicit or implicit. Particularly in a military environment, explicit communication is vulnerable to attacks, such as spoofing, jamming, or hacking. An implicit form of communication is, for example, 
the modeling of behavior. Think of sports team, where individual players have a mental model of what the other players on the team will be doing because they're all running the same play. Now, this is not dissimilar to military tactics, where battle drills are used to train teams to execute coordinated maneuvers with limited or no explicit communication among them. The fifth and last characteristic is autonomy and decentralization. While swarms ultimately operate at the direction of human decision makers, it does not mean that humans control the behavior of each individual robot. Instead, they exercise control over the swarm as a whole. For example, a human operator would select which target should be attacked and would authorize the swarm as a whole to engage, while the swarm would coordinate which of its units should carry out the attack according to a list of parameters, for example, proximity or payload. One of the most significant advantages for militaries will be the ability to use swarms to have military forces that are more adaptable and responsive at the battlefield's edge to adversary behavior. Today's swarms in the civilian and military domain are either under development or still in a testing and demonstration phase. In our report, we have identified eight military applications currently being researched and developed. For example, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations. So swarms may be tasked to search a defined area, for example, to find potential targets. None of the projects we have identified are said to have reached the operational stage. Designing, developing, and testing swarms in structured environments, like a lab, or relatively uncluttered environments, for example, in controlled airspace, is only the beginning. Deploying the same technology in an environment that is uncontrolled, unstructured, and potentially hostile presents many more challenges. Since governments began expert meetings on lethal autonomous weapon systems, or laws, in the context of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons back in 2014, the issue of maintaining human control over emerging technologies in the area of laws has been one of the main shared objectives. Discussion on lethal autonomous weapon systems in Geneva have focused on human control, or more accurately, human involvement and oversight. This is crucial to ensuring accountability under international humanitarian law. Swarms will likely challenge ways in which humans exercise control in military operations. For practical reasons related to the operational context, direct control of individual units in a swarm may become difficult and even counterproductive. Through the interaction of individual units with one another and with the environment, collective behavior may arise. This will be emergent and hard to predict. As the sophistication of the machine-to-machine -machine and swarm-to-surrounding interaction grows, for human involvement and oversight to remain effective, it must increasingly focus on the swarm as a whole rather than on its individual components. How humans, potentially accountable under IHL, engage with this collective behavior will be an important challenge for the future. Unidir's study on robotic swarms is designed to help disarmament practitioners and policy makers better understand how swarms operate and what is new or significant about them for autonomous systems. In so doing, we hope to contribute to ongoing discussions amongst member states and the global community about the appropriate levels of human control in lethal autonomous weapon systems. Technological innovation challenges our theories and our practice of war. They also challenge the instruments, the principles and the practice of arms control. Unidir's SecTech program helps us analyze and understand the risks and opportunities presented by new technologies and offers us practical policy options to help 
take advantage of the benefits and address the risks posed by new technologies.